A warm welcome to your Barbados Today April News Update for Wednesday, April 6. Warnings of more tough time ahead for Barbados and the region as the ongoing war in Ukraine continues to create global uncertainty. Against the backdrop of rising prices at the pumps, which have triggered local public criticism, Prime Minister Mia Motley told the Caribbean Nations Security Conference underway at the Hilton, there is no getting away from the rising cost of living that will affect Barbados and other countries. The truth is that with the war in Ukraine now going into its fifth or so week, we are now going to start to see, regrettably, some of the consequences of that war which have been spoken about. That is going to lead to discomfort in many of our countries with respect to prices and with respect to access to those commodities. It is going to lead, therefore, to the potential risk of us having to be able to settle our populations and to get them to understand that the world is going through a difficult moment. But it is not the first time that it has gone through, and it will regrettably not be the last because of the nature of just human civilization and our natural made environment. The commander of the U.S. Southern Command, Laura Richardson, who also addressed the CANSAC meeting, lamented that the Caribbean will be negatively impacted by the war in Ukraine. She stressed that it was mission critical to ensure the Caribbean remains a zone of peace, but acknowledged the region was facing other threats to its security. Recent crisis in Europe will undoubtedly impact the Caribbean and other regions in the world, such as increasing energy prices, which we've already seen, and the supply chain disruptions that we've already been experiencing. But I also know that the Caribbean faces unique cross-cutting threats in an ever-changing security environment. Stronger hurricanes and rising sea levels caused by climate change are destroying lives and livelihoods, tearing up family homes and reversing decades of growth. Prime Minister Motley, you said it best during COP26 at the Climate Change Summit in Glasgow last year that a two degree rise in global temperature is a death sentence for the small island developing states. What's worse, is what, what's worse is the poverty and job loss caused by natural disasters, which leaves so many people vulnerable to crime and violence. The increasing risk facing Caribbean countries was also a major talking point at the Caribbean Regional Risk Conference that opened today. President of the Caribbean Development Bank, Dr. Jean Leon, said, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic the Russia-Ukraine war and new emerging risks such as global rising inflation, a continued increase in interest rates and food and energy insecurity threaten the region's development and countries must adopt a new way to better respond to these increasing risks. Isolating the management of different types of risk is not the most effective way to mitigate risks. In fact, we hope you will conclude that risk management must be holistic and encompass a coherent set of policies that can address the diverse aspects of an evolving risk ecosystem. Caribbean countries are known to be among the most vulnerable states and the accumulated impact of a variety of natural hazard and macroeconomic shocks have significantly slowed our development and risk not achieving the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. A standardized approach to counseling is needed in the island's public and private schools to meet the needs of students. That's the view of Professor of Education and Professor in Charge of Counselor Education at Pennsylvania State University, Dr. Julia Green Bryan, who said the COVID-19 pandemic underscored the need for such a model. She was speaking at a workshop hosted by the Barbados Association of Guidance Counselors. And I'm hoping that more and more resources will be put into um, counselors in Barbados because the mental health needs, the academic needs, the college and career needs of students are just growing. So what I know about the pandemic, both here and overseas, is that it showed us just how many challenges kids and families have, and even more so how important mental health in the schools is not just academic counseling to help kids do better academically, that's very important. Not just college and career readiness, which is also very important, but also addressing the mental health needs of uh, children. And I think more and more we're realizing that we have to figure out a way that there can be enough counselors 
so that they can effectively meet all these different needs. Vice President of the Barbados Guidance Counselors Association, Karen Haynes, stressed that strengthening relations among all stakeholders within the education sector is imperative as students continue to face many challenges. The naked truth is that COVID-19 has dealt us all quite a blow and many of our major stakeholders are still reeling from isolation from their peers, feeling overwhelmed by the successive changes and losses and screen fatigue that has been plaguing parents, teachers, and students alike. Did I hear anybody register and did that resonate with anybody in the room? It is therefore imperative that we put our heads and our hearts together to identify the things that are yet needed and the potential improvements which may be steadily achieved over time. The COVID-19 experience has definitely taught us some valuable lessons. Simply put, we have learned that we need each other and that positive relationships must be purposefully engendered in order to create environments where students may achieve academic success. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Pure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Pure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news, Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness has been defending his government's decision to put forward the island's Foreign Affairs Minister, Kamina Johnson-Smith as that country's candidate for the post of Commonwealth Secretary General, even though CARICOM has shown its support behind current SG Baroness Patricia Scotland. He says there has been a strong push for an alternative to the incumbent. Kenya nominated a candidate and then subsequently withdrew. And today, Tuvalu formally launched its candidature in London. And it is quite possible that others could emerge. We can conclude that the first term of the incumbent has left room for challenge. In recent weeks, Jamaica has had to consider the state of affairs and future of the Commonwealth in conjunction with the incredibly strong encouragement and support to put forward a candidate, and specifically in the person of Minister Johnson. On the international front, EU member states are still trying to overcome their differences as they look to approve a fifth round of sanctions against Russia. The measures proposed by the European Commission yesterday include a ban on coal imports and the closure of European ports to Russian ships. The European Union is still trying to bridge gaps before approving a fifth package of sanctions against Russia. The measures proposed by the European Commission include a ban on coal imports and the closure of European harbours to Russian ships. But according to diplomatic sources, some member states, those more dependent than others on coal, for example, are asking for a three months phase out period. And according to some MEPs, the consequences of these sanctions on European economies should also be taken into account. We're faced with an unconscionable war and we need to exert the maximum amount of pressure. That means sanctions and more sanctions and whatever it takes. At the same time, we have to remember that we're also responsible for our security, our energy sufficiency and security, and our food security. So we can't jeopardize that. However, at a debate of the European Parliament, many MEPs were asking for the EU to go much further, including the President of the European Council, Charles Michel, who said sanctions on Russian oil and gas will be needed sooner or later. We must close the loopholes. We must target any attempts to circumvent sanctions. And we are ready to move quickly with further coordinated, robust sanctions. The new package includes a ban on coal import. 
And, ladies and gentlemen, I think, I think that measures on oil and even gas will also be needed sooner or later. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.